Hey, this is Rebecca over at Journal Tsunami, and I just wanted to tell you about this great new tool that Neil has released over at BookBolt. It was just released the other day, and I'm only just now playing with it, so I wanted to jump on and give you a really quick overview of how the tool works. And uh, if you don't have BookBolt already, uh, I have a link below and you can also use my coupon to get a 20% discount after your three-day trial is over. But for folks that have BookBolt, it's waiting for you in your back area. And this is a really great opportunity to get some information about some of the top selling books, keywords that we've been trying to get access to and only before had to use expensive tools to be able to gain this information. So when you log into BookBolt, uh, once you have it, it's just, I already looked up one of these books and I'll go through what I did to get to this, uh, but it's just right here on the side uh, uh, side navigation in BookBolt in your members area. And one of the things that's important is you only get 25 lookups a day. Now, you that's a lot. There's no reason why you should be looking up a lot of books every single day like this to get their keywords. So this really is something that comes near the end of your research process. You're looking up your keywords, you're finding the books um, that, you, that you want to uh, create, the niche that you want to get into, and now when you're getting ready to populate the backend keywords as you're uploading to KDP, that's where this tool comes in. Um, so let's take a look. I looked up this gratitude book. Most of us are familiar with it if you've been doing any research on Amazon at all. Uh, so we took a look at this book. It's a number one bestseller. It has been since 2017, so it's been around for a long time. I find that uh, the tool works best, uh, the Book Scout works best when you're looking at the top selling books, and that really is where we want to get our information from. So I'm in the All category, not the Books category. I'm in the All category and getting my results right here. In this particular situation, it isn't important for me to dig down into books because BookBolt is going to do that for me. So I just want to look at the top selling books for the keyword that I'm looking for. And I'm using DS Amazon Quick View, which I think anybody who's watched my videos in the past already has that as one of their main tools. So the Amazon Quick View tells me what my BSR is, tells me where in other categories that this book is ranking for, and it gives me my ASIN, which is the Amazon Identification Number, Amazon Shop Identification Number. So this is a product number exclusive to Amazon. It's not the ISBN of the book. It has nothing to do with the ISBN of the book. This is an Amazon identifier for their products on their platform. So we want to grab this number right here and we'll go back to the Book Scout and you would just basically paste, you can see I've already done some research, paste the number right there. Then you click the search button and it takes a couple of seconds um, for it to come back. It might even take as long as a minute depending on how busy the platform is because uh, it does have to go out to Amazon and then bring the information back. But look at the information that we get from this book. Now, if you've used BookBolt before, then you know that you get some of this information if you're just doing your regular product search. And so the value of this, uh, doing product and keyword research, is that you're not limited to searches at all when you're doing your products and your keyword searches. You're only limited to your 25 lookups when you're getting down to the nitty gritty here and uh, BookBolt is actually going and dipping into Amazon here and pulling these information back. Now one of the important things to understand is that you'll never ever have 100% real time Amazon numbers. So these items count and the search volume count are extrapolated based upon uh, you know, logarithms and all kinds of fancy math stuff that Neil and his team have done. 
to get to approximations because Amazon number one doesn't reveal these numbers. So tools like Helium and others, uh, Merchant Words, all depend on their own sort of access to Amazon and then other complicated mathematics that they do in the background. So these numbers right here will never 100% correspond to the total overall results that you find. But you'll find over time as you use this tool, I've looked it up a couple of times, you're getting very, very close, uh, normally within a, a thousand here or a thousand there, which really overall isn't going to matter. The most important thing to understand is that Amazon BSR and rankings change 24 hours every single day of every single day of the week and of the year. So 24-7, 365, Amazon ranks change and are updated. And so that's impossible for any tool to ever be up to date with Amazon's numbers. So close is good enough for what we need it for. In this particular case, what's so cool, and it's also very critical, that you do not, you do not, I can't emphasize this enough, do not copy, all right? Now, there's a couple of people that I'm finding that are copying some of these bestsellers, um, and Amazon, Amazon KDP just recently changed their rules saying if you try and look like a book and you actually steal their title and steal their description, you could lose your account. So don't copy this information, but use it for inspiration, all right? So there's lots of ways to use this title and take some really good information out of this title. So what Book Scout is doing is it's looking at the title and the description and it's going into a couple of different places. It's using the book's title, it's using Amazon auto suggest keywords that are in the populated um, keyword drop down in Gratitude Journal. So it looks at some of the words that are here, all right and pulls those into this tool. So you can see I have all these words down here. Now I'm not gonna go into every single detail um, and I'll tell you in a minute why. The other cool thing is, is this is the rank. So this book is ranking number one in the number one position for this entire phrase in the all area. In the all, not down in books, but in all, all right? And so I can toggle this, this rank. There's a little arrow here, so I can toggle it back and forth. So maybe number one is a little bit too competitive. I'm seeing how many items are in this competition. So like down here, Good Day Journal has 36,000 competitors. Now, if I look it up on Amazon, it's probably going to say 34,000. It might say 40,000. So it's somewhere in this vicinity. All I know is that's a, a whole heck of a lot. But here, I have, this has 600 search volume, Good Day Planner. Now this has only got 13,000 competitors, but it has a high search volume of 1,000. So that's really great. So this is a word I definitely wanna have, or a phrase that I wanna have in my back end keyword box, my seven boxes I have on the back end. I would use this phrase in my first boxes. Good day planner. So that's a great phrase to have. I can toggle by search volume. So this one has huge search volume. 17,000. So I'm, this is each day a new beginning for women. So that's an interesting phrase to have. They're only ranking 13. So that might be a strategy that I can use here because they're not really competing very heavily for this rank and for this one as well. This, they're ranking 16 in this one. Uh, each day is a new beginning for women. Now that's an interesting term I would have never thought about, right? You either. And there's only uh, 1,800 competitors, you know, almost about 2,000 competitors here. So that's not very highly competitive. It's got a huge search volume. So that's kind of crazy. 
So I would go and I would look at this research here. I would put this down to, to, to think about researching in this particular area here. But again, I think I would use the words from this phrase in my backend keywords. So this brings up another really good point. Words versus phrases. Keywords versus long tail keywords in my back end keyword area. There is no strict science. Don't make yourself crazy on this, all right? I personally do a hybrid in terms of I use certain keyword phrases because the Amazon algorithm is going to look up my book for each individual word and they're also going to look it up for certain phrases. Now, if, so, if a ton of people are looking this up, now this may be an actual book. So something that you should look it up and see if this is an actual book that somebody wrote. And so if it is, I'd be a little bit careful because I can't be misleading in my keywords, but I could use this phrase if I'm running an Amazon ad. So that's something to think about in terms of these keywords too. I would definitely take these keywords and use them in my Amazon ads 100% for sure. Um, it didn't start with you. Now this has very few items, but look at that search volume. 8,000 people are searching for this. Again, this is, might be a book. So I would be a little careful how I phrased it in my backend keywords, but I definitely would put it into my Amazon ads that I ran. And if it was a book, I can also target it, that book in my product research, in my product ads too on Amazon. But I do have to be careful in my backend keywords if it is a book um, that's a famous book, you know, like Harry Potter. I can't put Harry Potter in my backend keywords. Um, so I would look at a couple of these other ones. Again, many of these are perfect for Amazon ads. Uh, but as keyword phrases, I would use the word weight loss. I could certainly use that. Um, a good day and calendar I can use together in a phrase or maybe separated. Uh, good day start with gratitude journal. We know that that is actually a term, but I can have good days. I can have start with, and I can have gratitude journal in my backend keywords. And Amazon's algorithm will put them all together. So I just really wanted to touch on how amazing this tool is, not just for our seven box backend keywords, but anybody who's running ads, this is an excellent, awesome tool. And it also can give you ideas for other books that you might be creating because I'm now getting, looking at my, uh, how many competitors I have versus my search volume and I would definitely go in and do more research. Anyway, I don't want this to get too long. Um, on BookBolt itself, if you click the link that I have below, it will take you to this article um, where they talk about um, how to go through and um, use this tool if you need a little bit more instruction. Uh, Neil goes into uh, some pretty good detail about how he uses the tool itself. And then, of course, if you don't have BookBolt, you can sign up through my link um, and you can use my coupon that's below and get 20% off for, the, for your life uh, on this tool. So welcome, have fun. Um, and one cool thing now, I don't know if it will work for everybody. What, what I found out, and you can give it a try, is I looked at this book. And then I uh, right clicked and I opened in another, let's see, how did I do that? I opened in another tab and then I did a second research. I only tried it one time, so you can give it a try and see if you're able to do the same thing so that you can have multiple tabs open and do multiple researches. The other thing is, is right now, um, he doesn't have it so that you can download this as a CSV or anything like that, but you can just either uh, take a screenshot of this 
uh, and save this as a screenshot. Um, I use a tool that is called, what is it called? Uh, it's called Full Page Screen Capture, which is a Chrome add-on. And then it basically captures this entire page and turns it into a PDF document. Uh, so I captured the page and then I saved it as a PDF so I have access to the PDF right here. Um, so you can do that or probably you can copy and paste the whole thing into an Excel spreadsheet or into a Google Doc and it should actually pick up the columns so that you can sort it. I haven't tried that yet myself. Um, so you can give that a try. And like I said, see if you can open multiple books and then you can obviously save this information because I definitely want to uh, use these in my ad campaigns for my books that are in these categories. Um, just some other things to touch on. He gives you the seasonality, semi-annual, evergreen. So you can know whether these are evergreen term terms most of these are in the book category, so I think that's pretty redundant. We don't need to worry about that. They're almost all in books. These, this is in a toy category. Um, so if you, again, were running an ad and you wanted to have your book attached to a toy, which you can with product ads, then this would come in handy to know that this is a toy or a game. Um, but anyway, have fun, have fun, have fun. Uh, grab this, take a look at this article, and then go do some research, okay? You have 25 a day. Uh, so don't go too crazy. Don't make yourself crazy, but go and have fun. And hopefully, uh, it's brand new, so hopefully it will help increase the, uh, uh, the sales of your books. Have a great day. Bye-bye.